Welcome to an introduction to basic compound inequalities. When two inequalities are combined, we have what's called a compound inequality, as we see here. Notice how we have the variable in the middle, and we have two inequality symbols. We can read this negative one less than x less than two, but to understand this inequality, we want to start in the middle and read this from left to right and from right to left. Reading from left to right, notice how we have x is less than two. Notice how this does not include the endpoint of two. And x is also greater than negative one, reading from right to left. Notice for x greater than negative one, again, the endpoint of negative one is not included. So here, x is between negative one and positive two, not including the endpoints. Let's go ahead and graph this solution set. Remember, if we have less than or greater than symbol, we can graph using either rounded parentheses or open points. And if we have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we would graph using square brackets or closed points. And we'll show both. So again, x is less than two, so we can put a rounded parenthesis opening to the left on two. And x is greater than negative one, so we have another rounded parenthesis on negative one, this time opening to the right and we graph all the values between this interval here. Because the endpoints are not included, this is often referred to as an open interval. Using open or closed points, we'd have an open point on positive two, an open point on negative one, and we graph the interval between the two values. So here are two ways to graph the same solution set, or same interval. Using interval notation, the interval is from negative one to positive two, Again, the endpoints are not included, so we have a right-hand parenthesis on the left as well as on the right. Looking at the next compound inequality, we have x is less than or equal to two, reading from left to right, and x is greater than or equal to negative one, reading from right to left. So notice here the only difference is that the endpoints are included because of the equal part of the inequality symbols. So to graph this interval, We'd use a square bracket on two opening to the left, a square bracket on negative one opening to the right, and graph the interval between the two values. The square brackets indicate the endpoints are included. This is often called a closed interval. Using points, we'd have a closed point on positive two, a closed point on negative one, and graph the interval between. Using interval notation, again, the interval is from negative one to positive two, but because the endpoints are included, we use square brackets. Again, this is often called a closed interval. In our third example, we would read this x is less than two. Notice how this means two is not in the interval, and x is greater than or equal to negative one. So x is between negative one and positive two, but two is not included, but negative one is included. So if we graph this, we would have a rounded parenthesis on two opening to the left, and then we'd have a square bracket on negative one opening to the right. And we'd graph the interval between these values. So here's our solution set, or using points, we have an open point on two, a closed point on negative one, and we graph the interval between the values. Using interval notation, the interval is from negative one to positive two. It includes negative one, so we have a square bracket on negative one. It does not include two, so we have a rounded parenthesis on two. We can see the interval is closed on negative one and open on two. Example one, we're asked which of the following values are in the solution set for the compound inequality where n is less than five and n is greater than or equal to negative three. Now that we have the graph, we can determine if the following values are in the solution set by determining if they're in the given interval. So first we have n equals negative five. Notice negative five is to the left of our solution set, meaning it's not in the interval, and therefore negative five is not in the solution set. So let's go ahead and just say no. Next we have n equals negative three. Notice n equals negative three is the left endpoint, but here the endpoint is included because n is greater than or equal to negative three. 
which means n equals negative 3 is in the solution set. So we'll say yes, n equals negative 3 is in the solution set. Next we have n equals 0. Well here's n equals 0, and yes, 0 is in the solution set, so we say yes. Next we have n equals 4.99. Notice how the endpoint here is 5, which is not included, but 4.99 is to the left of 5, and therefore n equals 4.99 is in our solution set. So our answer is yes. Next we have n equals 5, but because the endpoint of 5 is not included, it's open on 5, n equals 5 is not in the solution set, so we say no. And finally we have n equals 12. Well 12 is to the right of positive 5, which would not be in our solution set or the interval, and therefore our answer is no, n equals 12 is not in the solution set. In example two, we're asked to write a compound inequality to represent the following situation. We also want to clearly indicate what the variable represents. So in A, a number is greater than or equal to five, but less than eight. So again, it's greater than or equal to five, but less than eight. So if we let n equal the number, we have two inequalities here. We have n is greater than or equal to five and and also has to be less than eight. Now let's combine these inequalities. When we do this, we want the values of five and eight to be in the same order they would be on the number line. So we'll have a five on the left and eight on the right, and we'll have our variable n in the middle. So first we know n must be greater than or equal to five. So if we start in the middle, reading this from right to left, we could say n is greater than or equal to five. Of course, we could also say five is less than or equal to n. Looking at these two inequalities here, notice how they're equivalent. The inequality symbol is pointing toward the five and opening toward the n. And we also know n is less than eight. So reading this from left to right, starting in the middle, we have n is less than eight. So n is between five and eight. The left end point of five is included in our solution set but the right end point of eight is not. So this would be the most common way to express the compound inequality for the given information. For B, my car's tank can hold a maximum of 20 gallons of gas. So if we think about a gas tank for a moment, we know it can't have a negative amount of gallons. It could either be empty, or in this case, hold a maximum of 20 gallons of gas. So if we let G equal the gallons of gas, G would be greater than or equal to zero and g would also have to be less than or equal to 20. Again, the tank could be empty all the way up to a total of 20 gallons at the most. Combining these two inequalities, again, we have a zero on the left, a 20 on the right, a g in the middle, and first g is greater than or equal to zero. Reading from right to left, we could say g is greater than or equal to zero, of course, we can also say zero is less than or equal to g. In either case, these two are equivalent. It's pointing toward the zero and opening toward the g, and g is less than or equal to 20, so from left to right, we have g is less than or equal to 20. Notice here the interval is from zero to 20, including both endpoints. I hope you found this helpful.